Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what are the differences between epidemiology, etiology, and risk factors? A lot of times when we talk about these constructs, it can become confusing because there's a lot of overlap between these constructs. So let's first start with epidemiology. When we think about mental health disorders, when we think about what causes them, what factors contribute to the development of mental health disorders, and how mental health disorders are distributed in a population, may spread throughout a population, and who they tend to affect. What we're talking about there is epidemiology. It's really looking at all these different factors when it comes to the development and course of mental health disorders. So if somebody is studying epidemiology, they're really looking at the big picture. They're looking at what risk factors are there for a mental health disorder, potential causes, and then how it progresses through a population. Now, a lot of times when we think of mental health disorders, we really don't think of them as spreading through a population like some medical disorders would. But actually, sometimes mental health disorders can. If we think about, for example, substance use disorders, the availability of a drug can affect how fast substance use disorders develop in a population. Also, we could think of trauma. If there's a traumatic event, it can affect a lot of people that were exposed to that traumatic event, so it can spread through that population that was affected. Now, when we move to etiology, with etiology, we're really just talking about something that's causal. Now, of course, when we talk about mental health disorders, it's difficult to say what's causal and what's not. It's not as clear-cut as sometimes we'd like it to be. But when we think of a construct or an event that's etiological, what we're really talking about is if that condition were removed, then the disorder would not have developed. That's how we think about causality. So we know that there are multiple factors that can come together to cause a mental health disorder, but if one were removed, that disorder would not have developed. That makes it etiological. So now moving to risk factors. So to start with, all etiological factors, all factors that we believe are causal, are risk factors. So like with post-traumatic stress disorder and trauma, we believe that trauma could be etiological. Of course, without trauma, you can't diagnose post-traumatic stress disorder, but trauma is also a risk factor. What's interesting about risk factors, though, is they don't have the same obvious connection as something that's etiological, meaning gender could be a risk factor for certain mental health disorders. We know, for instance, that females are more affected than males by major depressive disorder. But being female doesn't cause major depressive disorder. Rather, there's just an association between being female and developing major depressive disorder. We could also look at something like age. We know, for example, that schizophrenia tends to have an onset in the late teens or early 20s. So that age range could be considered a risk factor for developing schizophrenia. Being at that age doesn't cause schizophrenia. It's just associated with the onset of schizophrenia. And again, looking at just something like gender or someone's age, it would be very difficult to predict any particular mental health disorder developing. The risk would still be low based on any of those characteristics. As you start to add more and more risk factors that are associated with a mental health disorder, the ability to predict the onset of a mental health disorder increases. But really, someone could have all the risk factors for a particular mental health disorder and potentially still be unlikely to develop that disorder. And the association with any one disorder is quite small. Now, etiological factors, of course, we believe give us a better ability to predict the development of a mental health disorder. But even there, again, there are many etiological factors that come together to develop a mental health disorder. So as we're studying mental health disorders and what treatments are effective for mental health disorders, it's important to keep in mind epidemiology, etiology, and risk factors. They help us to understand what could cause mental health disorders, who's at risk, and how those mental health disorders may progress. I hope you found this description of epidemiology, etiology, and risk factors to be interesting. Thanks for watching.